Louisiana Tech poised to have an outstanding year again this season in 2019. Picked to finish second in the West, and we talk about Louisiana Tech right now. Their head coach, Coach Skip Holtz. Coach, good to see you, buddy. It's always a pleasure. Every year. It must be that time of year. We're, it, it, we're it here is. going live again. And I'm glued to the seat for two days. <laughs> <laughs> and joining us is the second most famous person from Burleson, Texas, Cody Russi, the Junior Center, honorable mention, Conference USA last year. No hair this year. We'll talk about that. And Kadarian Mason, defensive lineman, is also joining us. First of all, Skip, I, I want to talk about last year. Um, you finished 8-5. and five. You beat Hawaii in the bowl game. Yep. But was it a satisfactory year for you? Yeah, you know, there were a lot of positives in the year, and there were some great wins and some great individual accomplishments during the season. But um, I think when I look back at last year, my biggest regret, we went 10 straight games. We played right. seven games on the road. We did not play very well the last two games of the year, and I take a lot of that blame. I mean, when I when that season ended and we finished with two losses, there was a sour taste in everybody's mouth. And I feel like maybe I pushed too hard with all the road games and not having an mm-hmm. open date. I gave the team a week off, and we came back in preparation for, Hawaii and I thought holy cow where was that team where was that team a week ago flying around energy passion enthusiasm I thought what you know what we were a tired football team and that's my that's that was on me and so coming back for the bowl game I mean it was really important I think for all of us to put our best foot forward and to show really what what that football team in 2018 could accomplish and really proud of the players and the way they responded the way they handled a very difficult trip to Hawaii to play Hawaii in their own backyard Louisiana of Tech's never been in one in Hawaii when we used to be in that conference right. with them. To go out there and to win, I, I thought that was just a huge accomplishment with that football team. I don't think people understand the grind of playing week after week after week. Right. And with injuries mounting up, and then the, there's just so many factors that go into that. There are a lot. And like you said, normally you have that open date, but we played two games, had an open date, and then went 10 straight. And out of those 10, like I said, seven of them were on the road. And it made it, it just made it really, made it really difficult. And I, I wish I would have done a better better job with that football team and, and preparing them for the grind, but never been through 10 straight weeks without an open date. Well, the good news is they've got this year, and they also have their starting quarterback coming back this season, Jamar Smith, uh, starting his third year. Did year two, did he have the growth you thought he would have? You know, I think he grew up an awful lot. I don't know that he had the surrounding pieces around him mm-hmm. with so many players that, that had left. You know what I mean? So many players that had graduated and moved on. Uh, the thing with Jamar right now, we, we want to talk about the success of a Cody Sokol, of a Jeff Driscoll, right. of a Ryan Higgins. I mean, you're talking about three quarterbacks uh, that took us all to bowl games those years and did a great job. And Jamar, same thing. We've won two bowl games in a row with them. Um, but Jamar, Jamar's grown up on stage. Jamar didn't get a chance to grow up behind the curtain right. as a sophomore and a junior, and he's been thrust out there on the field, and I think he's really, I think he's done a, a nice job. It's not the year that I hope he's going to be better this year than he has been the last two, but I really think Jamar is poised to have a great year this year, and I'm excited about what who he's got in front of him. I think he gave a taste to the team of what he can do because in his bowl game, I thought that was his best game of the year. Well, I think he's he's had some great individual performances. We just have to – we got to get more consistent. And we've right. just got to get – when you look at it, he can make every throw. He's done everything he needs to do. He can lower his shoulder. He's big. He's athletic. He can run. Uh, we just got to get a little bit more consistent. And I, th- I think the other thing that I think will really – kind of probably stunted his growth a little bit was not having a backup quarterback. I mean, right. when, when he got the starting job as a sophomore the other two left and so I mean all of a sudden you're looking at having one quarterback and I think the two guys behind him both redshirted a year ago and I think both of them are really poised to, to push your position a little bit this year let's continue to talk about the offense because Adrian Hardy wide receiver had a breakout year last season preseason all conference USA again this year how does he up his game you know, he's just he's so athletic. I mean, when you put the ball in, toward, in his direction, he's going to come down with it. You talk about production. He had, I think it was 10 catches for 180 yards right. against LSU. I mean, just a very productive receiver. I think he shines on the big stage. But I think he's just got great body control and production because he's got hands and he's got size to go along with it. Let's talk about the ground game because it was really hindered, I think, by injuries last year. It was, and when you look at you know Jaquise Dancy, who right. who was our leading running back, but ended up having hit or miss week to week with injuries mm-hmm. and everything that he's been through, battling cancer and uh, beating beating cancer, and then coming back. Um, but I think also Israel Tucker, the backup, had some injuries, and we had J- Justin Henderson was in and out. I mean, so right right now we've just hopefully we can stay healthy at that position, but I think we've got about four or five guys that are ready. To 
continue to make a contribution. Well, they stepped a four-year streak of having at least one 1,000-yard rusher, which mm-hmm. I think is pretty good. Now, your offensive line is pretty set, but are the tackles up for grabs? Well, both of them are up for grabs. This guy talking, sitting next to me, who I know you'll talk to in a yep. minute, I mean, has just become a stable force in the middle. As a center, as a leader, uh, vocal, tough, hard nose. I just can't say enough positive things about him. And I think he anchors experience, especially inside. When you look at both Ethan Reed and, and Kirk Patrick, who's right. next to him, you've got two seniors and a junior up, up front that have played quite a bit of football and been around a little bit. Uh, Dwight Stallworth, having him back as one of the tackles who was redshirted, was supposed to be mm-hmm. a senior last year and then redshirted. And right now the left tackle is completely up for grabs. And we got a lot of people that are going to be competing for it. But uh, I think that's one of the question marks that needs to be answered on the offensive side of the ball this fall camp. Let's talk defense because a new defensive coordinator, what type of changes should we expect on defense? I, you know, I'm, I'm excited for, for Blake Baker and the new opportunities he has as a, as a defense coordinator, but could not be more excited about the addition of Bob Diaco. Uh, you talk about a guy that probably brings more experience right. than any other coach that we've had there during my tenure uh, at Louisiana Tech. I mean, he's been coordinator at Notre Dame. He's been at Cincinnati. He's mm-hmm. been at Virginia, uh, Nebraska, Oklahoma. He's been a head coach. I mean, he just brings a wealth of experience, and I think he's got a very multiple defense. I think the players are going to enjoy being in it. I think it's been uh, it's been a change, and there's been a lot to learn, a lot to learn in the learning curve. Uh, but there certainly hadn't been a shortage of energy with what we're doing right now on the field defensively. Well, the good news is, Bob, you are our defensive coordinator. Now you got to replace Jalen Ferguson. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's not <laughs> those always are, easy. Those are some big shoes to so, fill. Some very talented players walked out as the all-time leading sack leader in college yeah. football history. That's some big shoes to fill. But also look at the return. Guys like Legereus Sneed, the mm-hmm. safety, Amik Robertson, who I think – as another first-team selection, is just special. Amik Robertson, uh, he thinks he's two feet taller than anybody else on the field. <laughs> that guy plays with a passion and energy, a competitive spirit that not many people play the game with. And I think that's part of what makes him so special. But I think we, sitting here looking at it, I think there's I think there's eight seniors uh, right. on defense that are going to be in this mix right now. And there's some, some very, very talented players. When you talk about James Jackson, Colin Scott, Connor Taylor at the linebacker positions, all coming back, you look at... BJ and what he brings to the the front up front from a, from really um, I'm going to say a young defensive line when you look at the number of starts that are coming back. But BJ's played a lot of football for us, and right. when you look at what what he's done along with Courtney Wallace, who's been both of them have been in the program for four years. And uh, there's a young man named Willie Baker who you know I'm not going to say he's going to replace Jalen Ferguson because those are pretty big shoes to fill. Uh, but I'll tell you, in the bowl game, Jalen Ferguson had two sacks and Willie Baker had four. There you so, go. So, you know what, I, I, I like Willie Baker, and I think he's going to have an opportunity to have a breakout year. Secondary, is that the strength of the defense? Without a doubt. I mean, that's when I look at – uh, there are guys back there that have played a lot. Michael Sam is a senior back there. You've got four seniors in the secondary with uh, truly three, all three or four of them have been in this program for a while, and all of them have a chance to be really, really special players. I, I look at Michael Sam, the other corner across from Amik Robertson, who is a, a transfer from a from a school out west, a Power 5 school. Uh, with him coming in, he got injured last year. He redshirted, he got injured, right. uh, and then I think he really has a chance to have a pretty special year for us on the other side of a meek is a meek next level talent yes he's yes. a stud no he is a stud and he's he's a stud physically i mean but he is mentally is where i think his strong suit is and i think i think there may be three guys three guys in the back end that all have an opportunity to play this game on sundays well let's talk to the players now and joining us had mentioned earlier cody russi the junior center from burleson texas I can't believe your partner does not know who uh, Kelly Clarkson is. I know. You I, need to school him. I'll, I'll coach him up on that. You need to at least get get us some uh, songs that he can listen to on the way home today. We'll, we'll play some on the way home. Okay, Cody. <laughs> we'll play some on the way home. I, I was kidding, Cody, because a couple of years ago, Coach McFarland, offensive line coach, pulled me aside and said, and Cody had hair down to about here, I think it was, wasn't it? And he, he goes, that's my next big star. And, and this was, I guess it would have been your freshman year. And he said, this guy has got everything. Power lifter here in the state of Texas. One uh, was very, very good at it, as a matter of fact. And now you're a junior and you're a mainstay on the offensive line. Talk about the way you've progressed in the last three years. Uh, really just getting there and uh, just working hard, you know. And, you know, Coach Hester, he's done a great job uh, 
changing from power to explosiveness, explosiveness on mm-hmm. the uh, weight room side. And then uh, all the coaches just putting me in positions to lead and, uh, you know, just let me excel my game. Uh, coach McFarland, he's a great coach, uh, you know, keeps on coaching me day in, day out. Anytime I can text him, if, he, if he's in his office, right. you know, hey, coach, should I take this step or this step? And, you know, he'll always coach me up. So really just uh, the coaches and help, you know, put me in the best position for me to excel in in football. You know how to get on Coach Max good side now? You get him one of these floppy hats you're giving out. Oh, I know. Every, the little bucket hats? Every day. He'd go nuts. Every day. A Conference USA bucket hat is for Coach Max. Don't you think, Coach? Uh, I think he, he, happy. When you look at Coach Mack, I mean, that's where he's in his element. I mean, when he's got his floppy hat, I'm probably sitting on the beach. But. <laughs> uh, just for the record, too, Cody had a Texas deadlift record of 700 and 15 pounds. I had a Texas deadlift record of two hamburgers. 740. So 40? Oh! It's, it's wrong on the paper. It yes. is? 740 pounds, yes, sir. Notice how quickly he was to cover that, even without the Samson hair. Yep, seven hundred. Okay, why'd you cut the hair before we get on? It was three years. It was hot. It was, it was time to grow <laughs> up a little bit. It took you three years to figure out it's hot. And I'm, I'm getting into my junior year, you know, school and stuff. i got to be professional, so... <laughs> I don't buy any of that. Do you? <laughs> it was mom probably told her, cut your hair. <laughs> Kadarian Mason, the defensive lineman. Talk about your defense this year. And there's always been a lot of pride on the defensive side of the football. Going into this season, what's it going to be like? Uh, going into this season, is going to be brand new for us because of the new defense. We're still, le- we're still learning as it, uh, as it goes. Fall camp, we got to lock into the playbook more, you know, get into the film room and understand it more. But I feel like it's going to be great defensive-wise for us. We got new guys coming in, Milton Williams. He's going to be a big impact for us. Like, we got Willie Baker returning. We got Courtney Wallace. Our starting four up front, I feel great about those guys. Before we let you go, though, Jalen Ferguson, what did he teach you while he was at Louisiana Tech? While I was here, Jalen told me I was going to be special. He saw it in me when I, when I stepped foot on campus. He, he left me some big shoes to fill because as me returning with a lot of experience, he said, just show it on the field and your production, they'll follow. And as he's shown it, sack leader, 45 sacks. There you go. <laughs> Always sets the example, right? Yes, sir. Well, gentlemen, thank you. Coach, good to see you again, my friend. Always a pleasure. Gentlemen, Always a pleasure. best of luck this Definitely. year, okay, thank and you. stay healthy. When we come back, we'll be talking to Conference USA Commissioner Judy McLeod. 